Hey everyone, I'm Matthew Francis and I'm gonna show you how to make some classic beef stew. So beef stew is one of those recipes that's used all over the world. It's super classic in French cooking, British cooking, and American cooking. And basically, what makes it so good is it just kind of brings you back to home, it's really hearty, it really fills you up, and it just is perfect during the autumn or winter months. So basically for beef stew meat, you want to have meat that's usually kind of tough. So let's say bottom round, top round, eye round, beef chuck, things like that, where they're more tough and that way when you cook them low and slow in the oven or on the stove top, they really get really nice and gentle over time. So once you have your big chunk of beef roast, here's how you cut it into cubes. First, you're gonna take your larger chunk of meat and put it onto a cutting board. Take your long, sharp knife and cut long strips of the beef. And you want it to be about one to two inches in thickness. And then you're gonna cut off any pieces of extra fat that you don't wanna have in your stew. Then you're gonna flatten those pieces and you're going to cut more strips. Then once you have these beef strips, you're gonna take your knife and cut the cubes going crosswise. Now your beef cubes can be either one to two inches in thickness or one ounce to two ounces in weight. It all depends on how big your bite size is for you. Keep in mind that when you do cook your beef, it will shrink a little bit. So you don't want it to be too small and you don't want it to be too huge. Seriously, it's that easy to take your big piece of beef and cut it down into smaller cubes. Now we can move on to actually making the stew itself. So first thing you're gonna do is once you've cut your beef into smaller cubes, you're gonna put those into a bowl and you're gonna season it with salt and pepper. Now, beef stew doesn't have a lot of seasoning in itself, so you really want to be heavy-handed with your salt and pepper with the beef here. It's so important that you add a ton of flavor into the beef. Next, to the seasoned beef cubes, add in some flour and some paprika. The paprika gives a little bit of smokiness to the beef stew that's really delicious, and it gives some great red color. You're gonna take that flour and you're gonna put it on the cubes of meat and toss it all up together so the flour can fully coat all of the beef cubes. And then you're going to cook the meat. Always make sure to keep retossing the flour and the meat together so you have a nice dry coated pieces of beef. Then you're gonna get a heavy bottom Dutch oven or rondo and you're gonna add in some oil into the pan, coat it all over, and then you're going to sear your pieces of beef. This is so incredibly important. You're going to make sure you don't overcrowd the pan, put the beef cubes onto the bottom in the oil and have them start to fry, sear, and get really caramelized and dark brown. You don't want them touching each other, you wanna give them space, and you wanna make sure there's enough room that all of the heat from the pan really browns that meat. And then I flip them over to sear the other side. But of course, you're gonna have like the edges that aren't fully browned. So once you get both sides of the beef fully cooked and fully nice brown, kind of crusty, then you can take your wooden spoon and just kind of move them around in the pan to sear the rest of the cubes. Now the point here is not to fully cook them, not to have them be fully tender yet. You just wanna get a really dark brown crust on all the edges of the beef cubes, and then you wanna remove them from the pan. In the pan, you should have some brown bits on the bottom, maybe some burnt pieces and some leftover fat. That's great add your onions to the pan. And this is the time to really get them really dark brown, get them nice and caramelized, and you wanna add maybe a little bit more salt and pepper. But the goal here is to get the onions nice and brown because they're going to kind of melt away into the stew anyway. So you may as well get that dark brown flavor that really adds complexity to your stew. You can add in your garlic and you're gonna do the same thing. You're going to cook it down until they're nice and caramelized and fully sweated and they release all of their great juices. And then we're gonna add in tomato paste. Now tomato paste is not in all beef stew recipes, but I'm telling you, if you add it in and you do this step, it's gonna make your beef stew out of this world. So what do we do with all that fond on the bottom of the pan? Don't get worried, it's actually really gonna help our dish. The next step is to deglaze with red wine. How you deglaze is literally just taking some red wine, pouring it into your stew, and then taking your wooden spoon and kind of scraping off the fond from the bottom, and then all of those bits will release and go into the liquid. And I'm telling you, this is gonna take your beef stew from like a six to an 11. It's so incredibly important. Then once your onions, your garlic, tomato paste, and wine is thick, again, in the bottom of the pan, you can add in your herbs. I like to add in herbs to Provence, dried thyme, dried rosemary, and bay leaf. Then you can add in your beef broth. 
You want to stir this all together and that's going to create the gravy for your beef stew. And you want it to boil for a minute so that way it starts to reduce. And then once you have all those really incredible flavors in there, you can add your beef back in. Stir them around, make sure they're coated with some liquid. Then take the lid of your Dutch oven or your Rondo, put it on top, and you're gonna take that whole pot and put it in the oven and let it cook for about an hour to an hour and a half at 350 degrees. Beef stew needs to cook on a low, slow heat, so that way we have a thick gravy at the end and tender beef. The proper term for this is called braising. After your hour or hour and a half is up, you should take the pot out. The next step we wanna do is add in any extra vegetables that you wanna to add to your stew. I'm gonna add in some Yukon Golds for some color and some carrots. Make sure the liquid is fully covering it, put the lid back on and put it back in the oven. And you want to cook for another 30 minutes to an hour. And then after your potatoes and your carrots are tender, you can take your beef stew out of the oven. And for me, I always like to add in some fresh peas as well as some fresh rosemary and fresh thyme. You can enjoy it with some potatoes, with some rice, with some bread. It really is such a great recipe for winter and I hope you make it and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for hanging out with me. If you did enjoy watching this video, please subscribe to All Recipes. We make a ton of helpful food videos that are gonna be so useful for you in your kitchen. And don't forget to press the notification bell so you don't miss any of the great videos we do make. And down in the comments below, tell me about the last time that you had beef stew. I'm Matthew Francis and I'll see you next time.